get a bigger ringside ticket price in Chicago. He could get $40 there and just $27.50 here in the city of New York. So he took the fight there, and the day the ticket office opened, they went over a million dollar gate. September 22, 1927. By fight time, the gate had amounted to over $2,600,000. Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney squared off in Chicago's Soldier Field in one of the most controversial fights in boxing history. Over 100,000 fans, a live crowd greater than any attendance at any baseball game, watches as the first round of one of boxing's most controversial fights begins. Tunney is wearing the light-colored trunks. The fifth and final million dollar gate under the promotional reigns of Tex Rickard. This fight sets the record that may never be broken. Two million six hundred and fifty thousand dollars official gross receipts from a live gate. Champion Gene Tunney will receive a cool one million dollars for 40 minutes work. The fight itself follows a pattern similar to the first match. Dempsey lands a potent right hand counter, follows up with a series of seven devastating punches. Tunney goes down for the first time in his career. Dempsey stays near the fallen fighter, but referee Dave Barry points for Jack to move to a neutral corner. Only then does he begin the count. Is Tunney dazed, or is he wisely taking full advantage of these precious extra seconds? Tunney is up at the referee's count of nine. Now, watch that sequence again in freeze action with a stopwatch on the knockdown. Tunney has just hit the canvas, and we start the watch at zero. Jack has forgotten the new rule. The count does not begin until he gets to a neutral corner. Instinctively, Dempsey stays nearby. Five seconds have elapsed before referee Barry is ready to begin the count. Gene looks hurt, dazed as the count begins. But here at the official count of four, when nine seconds have actually elapsed, he is looking at the referee and picks up the numbers. You be the judge. Could Tunney have risen at this point? At the referee's count of nine, but after 14 seconds have elapsed, Gene is getting off the canvas. Then unabashedly, he gets on a bicycle to stay away from the rampaging Dempsey, who had scored only after 17 rounds of maddening frustration. round, Tunney has fully recovered. In slow motion, watch him get in with a right that drops Dempsey for a one count. Notice here the referee incorrectly will start his count immediately after Jack's knee touches and before Gene could get to a neutral corner. Round 10. Tunney has taken complete charge. Bruised and exhausted, Jack Dempsey seems at the verge of being knocked out for the first time in 10 years. There's the bell. The fight is over. Gene Tunney overwhelmingly the winner. But the long count gives sporting buffs something to discuss whenever they get together. Jack Dempsey knew at the age of 32 it was time to hang up the gloves. He pocketed $450,000 for the rematch, while Tunney earned close to a million. When Tex Rickard tried to make a third match, Jack feared for his health and turned down $1 million. When the Depression hit, Jack Dempsey, like millions of other Americans, fell upon hard times. He lost $3 million, and eventually Estelle Taylor filed for divorce. He fought numerous exhibitions and invested in the Jack Dempsey restaurant. Then things began to get better, and the Manassa Mauler lived the comfortable life of an ex-champion. On July 1st in 1940, Jack Dempsey decided to give adoring fans one last farewell in what turned into a farcical and absurd contest 
Jack took on Cowboy Luttrell. Dempsey was introduced as the most popular sports figure in history. It was a title he had earned. Dempsey, former champion of the world after losing to Gene Tunney, is attempting a comeback. Dempsey has shown a lot of his old fire, scoring nine knockouts in nine fights in a seven-month period. Cowboy Luttrell weighs 236 pounds for this fight. Jack Dempsey scales 211 pounds. You can see Luttrell is built like an ox. He can give and take a lot of punishment. Early in the fight, Dempsey goes to work on Luttrell. It's Dempsey with punishing lefts and rights. Luttrell is hurt, but is tough and courageous and stays on his feet. This is something of a grudge fight, because four months ago, Dempsey had refereed a match in which Luttrell was one of the contestants. Luttrell took a swing at him. A near riot ensued, and this match was made between Dempsey and Luttrell. And here in the second round, it's almost impossible to see what holds Luttrell up, as Dempsey throws everything but the kitchen sink. Luttrell goes down. He's almost out on his feet. In this fight, Dempsey shows flashes of the power that gained him the heavyweight championship of the world. Luttrell is down again. And again. Dempsey puts Luttrell through the ropes and out. Luttrell was carried out in an ambulance and taken to Crawford Long Hospital where he recovered. Dempsey took home only $5,000 and the Atlanta Constitution called the fight a disgrace. Well, thank you very much, Pat. That was a grand exhibition for you to referee. I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I, I think it was a nice fight. It was a good comeback try for me. This fellow's a tough fellow, and a game fellow, and a good fighter. Well, best of luck to you, Jack, and anything else you might try to accomplish for the future. Thank you very much, Pat. So Jack Dempsey had officially retired. In January of 1950, Jack was voted the greatest prize fighter of the half century in a nationwide poll of writers and sportscasters. He ended his feud with Jack Kearns at the award dinner at the Hotel Edison. Jack Dempsey would go down in boxing history as one of the most celebrated heavyweights of all time. Many champions own a piece of the record books, but only a very few achieve the popularity of the Manasseh Mora, a boxing legend, a true American hero. The walls here at the Spectrum Fine Art Gallery in New York City are literally a history of the great fights in heavyweight boxing. There's Dempsey Tunney, Ali Frazier, Walcott, and Lewis. Everybody has their favorite champion. Ray, let me ask you, in the great scheme of things, all the years you've been in this sport and all the heavyweight champions that you've seen, where do you put Jack Dempsey? Well, Jack Dempsey stands out amongst the best. I mean, this is one man that electrified the crowd. He was like a volcano erupting. For heaven's sake, he left the people gasping for breath with the suddenness and the viciousness of his attack and the speed and endurance that he displayed. Ray, let me ask you, were Jack Dempsey to be fighting in this day and age, would he fare as well in the heavyweight division today as he did back in the Fare 20s? as well. He'd have a picnic. My heavens, who was there could be the Jack Dempsey? Who could stand up under that vicious attack? No, these young men are, are good performers, but they don't compare with the great Dempsey. The debate will go on. Who is the greatest heavyweight champion of all time? For Ray Arcel and Barney Nagler, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you next time around on Boxing's Best. June 9, 1978, classic round in boxing history, round 15, Holmes to the left, Norton to the right, toe to toe, Holmes the winner, the new WBC heavyweight champion of the world. First defense, Alfredo Evangelista, seventh round action, Evangelista, not a worthy opponent, finished off in that seventh by that right. Second defense, the awkward hard to hit Ozzy Ocasio, but not too hard to hit for Holmes. That right, right there, the second of three knockdowns, Ocasio went in the seventh. Third defense, Mike Weaver, proved to be a tough cookie for Holmes, punished Holmes here in the 11th round. And then, that right uppercut put Weaver down. He couldn't come to himself in the 12th round. Look, an easy target. And finally, the official had to come in and stop the contest.